In this video, we will be looking at the enthalpy changes which occur in the dissociation of ionic substances. The next video will include combustion and acid-base reactions. Dissolution is a process which involves both chemical and physical changes. There are three stages which are involved. The first of which is the separation of water molecules from one another, and that is a physical change. The second one is separating ionic compounds into their ions, which is a chemical change. And the third one is the hydration of ions, which is also a physical change. There are three steps which are involved in the dissolution of ionic compounds in water. In the first step of dissolution of the ionic compounds, the intermolecular forces between the water molecules are broken. These intermolecular forces are going to include all three types, hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole interactions, and dispersion forces. If we recall from our previous lesson, the breaking of intermolecular forces, or the breaking of bonds in general, is an endothermic type reaction, because energy is required in order to snap it. In the second step, dissociation, we are separating ionic compounds into their individual ions. This means that we will need to overcome an ionic compound's lattice energy, which is the energy which is holding the lattice together, which is dependent on the strength of the ionic bonds, the ionic radius, and the ionic charge. Now the lattice energy is going to be determined by ionic radius because if the radius is smaller, it is going to be tightly packed together, resulting in a higher energy. It is important to recognize that ionic compounds each have their own individual lattice energies. And so the amount of energy which is required to separate the ionic compounds will differ. Again, because in step two we are breaking bonds, we should expect the thermodynamic nature of this to be endothermic. This is because the breaking of the ionic bonds is going to require energy. It is important to note that step 1 and step 2 are occurring simultaneously, as one step is not necessarily occurring before the other. Now the final step is dis Now the final step is hydration. This is where the water molecules and ions have already been dissociated, and so the free cations and anions then become surrounded by the water molecules. What we then see is the formation of ion dipole forces which occurs with the cations forming them with the partially negative oxygen atoms, and the anions forming them with the partially positive hydrogen atoms. Now in this step of the reaction, because we are forming bonds, we can predict and know that this step is going to be exothermic. So we know that step 1 is endothermic, we know that step 2 is also endothermic, and step 3 is exothermic. So what does this mean for the overall thermochemical nature of the reaction? Well, the answer is that it depends. The overall enthalpy change is determined by the sum of each of the three steps. If less heat is released during hydration than is absorbed, then the reaction is going to be endothermic and the temperature is going to decrease. Now conversely, if the temperature released was more than that was absorbed, the reaction is exothermic and the temperature is going to increase.